The first thing I would like to do in your dealer renewal course is give you some really valuable contact information. Texas dealers are regulated by the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles Motor Vehicle Division and they have what is known as the dealer licensing section. The dealer licensing section has oversight over dealers and they're going to process your dealer license renewal application. They are located at 4000 Jackson Avenue, Austin, Texas 78731. I also want to make sure you have their phone number which is 888-368-4689. Once again that number is 888-368-4689. This is a great phone number that you can reference at any time if you have specific questions, or you can also send them an email, askdmv at txdmv.gov. Once again, that is askdmv at txdmv.gov. And I also want to remind you that you can review all the training content in your Texas dealer renewal course at texasdealers.com. And at that time, you can fast forward through the videos to the specific content that you want to review. On the texasdealers.com website, we will also attempt to have direct links to all of your Texas dealer forms and the dealer manuals that are produced by the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles. So we will jump onto that website several times during your dealer renewal course to show you how to review content and download dealer forms and download dealer training manuals. Before we get started, I want you to know exactly why you're sitting at your computer or, or your iPad or possibly watching this course on your phone. In September of 2019, the governor signed Senate Bill 604, which requires each person obtaining a dealer's license for the first time to take a six hour training pre-license course and requires any dealer that was licensed less than 10 years on September 1st of 2019 to take a three hour renewal course in order to renew a dealer's license. You know, Texas was, I believe, the last major state to require dealers to take any type of mandated training. All of the larger states such as California, Florida, Illinois, Ohio, Georgia, North Carolina, Michigan, Virginia, Washington, Missouri, almost all of the larger states and most smaller states require a person to complete some type of dealer education requirement in order to obtain or renew a dealer license. It's kind of like if you want to get a real estate license, you can probably make some good money. So states require that you take training before you can get a real estate license. If you want to get an insurance license, you can make some money. So, you know, states require you take training before you can obtain an insurance license. You currently have a Texas dealer's license, and I'm assuming you are making some pretty good money. Otherwise, you would not be taking this renewal training course in order to renew your dealer's license. Most states also require continuing education in which you are required to take training every year or two in order to renew your license. There are states that require dealers to take in-class training every year in order to renew a dealer's license as well. Many states, unlike Texas, do not allow dealer training to be taken online and dealers must sit in a classroom environment with an instructor to gain or renew a license. Senate Bill 604 did not create a continuing education requirement for dealers. It only created a one-time renewal course that you must take to renew your license if you have not been licensed, if you've been licensed for less than 10 years on September 1st of 2019. This course is going to take a little over three hours if you take it all at one time. And as soon as you have watched every video, your official certificate of completion will just automatically pop up on your screen and you'll need to save it on your computer, or your iPad, and you must upload it through e-licensing when you're renewing your dealer's license. And that will show the state that you've completed your mandatory three hours of renewal training. So let's go ahead and get started with your renewal training course. And the first thing I would like to do with you is cover deceptive trade practices. I want to go over the lemon law, documentary fees. We're going to cover advertising regulations. I'm going to talk about exporting motor vehicles and how to easily find state laws. Deceptive Trade Practices Act. The Texas Attorney General is not only the chief law enforcement office in the state, the Attorney General's office also protects consumers from scams and fraudulent business practices. The main tool the Attorney General's Office uses to protect Texas consumers is known as the Deceptive Trade Practices Act. 
This law lists many practices that are false, deceptive, or misleading. When someone falls victim to illegal practices covered by the Deceptive Trade Practices Act, they may have the right to sue for damages under the act. If they win the lawsuit and prove that the dealer knowingly deceived them, they may be eligible to recover up to three times the damages. You must operate ethically at all times and give full disclosure of any vehicle defects that you're aware of in writing or your customers could have financial recourse against you. Ethical standards is imperative, obviously, in your business, and you must disclose any mechanical defect, no matter how minor it is, in writing to your customers. That way, your customer will never have legal recourse against you under the Deceptive Trade Practices Act. The Lemon Law applies to new vehicles that have been purchased from franchise dealers or leased from franchise dealers. There is no Lemon Law relief for used motor vehicles purchased if they have no remaining factory warranty. The Lemon Law requires manufacturers to notify buyers of their right to compensation if a vehicle is defective. And it also requires auto manufacturers to repair or replace Lemon vehicles within a reasonable period of time. The Lemon Law generally does not involve a used motor vehicle. It's normally related to new motor vehicles purchased directly from a franchisee. If you purchase a motor vehicle to resell and later discover that vehicle was part of a buyback program, <clears throat> excuse me, and the vehicle still has remaining warranty, you could have recourse with the manufacturer. I'm sure you're aware <clears throat> you probably have some customers in your dealership that demand you make major repairs to a vehicle that they purchased from you some time ago because of the Lemon Law. I'm sure you've heard your customers' vast encyclopedic knowledge of the Lemon Law, but always be sure to direct them to the manufacturer of the vehicle. Next, I want to talk about documentary fees. I want to give you an overview of documentary fees. First of all, since you've already been operating a profitable dealership, and as I stated a little earlier, I'm assuming you're making money with your business and that's why you're renewing your dealer's license, I'm sure you're aware that the majority of your profit is from the markup of the vehicle. So let's say you buy a car at the dealer auction for $2,000 and you sell it on the lot for $4,995. You just made a nearly $3,000 profit on the markup of the vehicle. But a dealer selling motor vehicles can also charge a fee for preparation of documents related to the sale, which is called a documentary fee. The fees are regulated by the Texas Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner, and they also fall under Texas Finance Code 348.006 Part E. There are two different documentary fees that are allowed under Texas state law. $150 or less. A dealer is not required to provide notification or a cost analysis to the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner before charging a documentary fee of $150 or less. But over $150, before charging a documentary fee that is greater than $150, then a dealer must provide both the notification and a cost analysis to the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner. So if you are charging a documentary fee of $150 or less, you are not required to notify the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner. But if you are charging more than $150, you must provide written notification to the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner stating the amount and the reason for the amount. The Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner only accepts documentary fee filings through the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner's Application Licensing Examination Compliance System, which is referred to as ALEX. If you plan on charging more than $150 documentary fee, you need to go to the ALEX system of the website. And remember, the ALEX stands for Application Licensing Examination Compliance System. And you can find that website at alex.occc.texas.gov. I want to remind you, the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner's official website is occc.texas.gov, but if you're going to notify them that you are charging a higher documentary fee, then you'll need to go to alecs.occc.texas.gov. And, you know, as with any secure website, we're going to register first, and over to the right of the screen, you're going to click on the Create Online account. Be sure to always save a copy of your usernames and passwords for all the websites that you are creating accounts to. Once you've created your news username and password, you'll enter your username and password. Just log on to Alex 
with your new ID and password. And that's going to be alecs.occc.texas.gov. Then you're going to click on Manage My Business over to the left. And then over to the right, you'll click on the Doc Fee Filing button. And on this page, you will need to enter your new documentary fee and your contact information. And on the final page, you'll need to make sure that all the information is correct. Be sure to clearly describe that you will be charging higher documentary fees in the comments section and why. You can also upload any additional documents and this automated system will easily walk you through the next required steps. You're allowed to charge this documentary fee to cover the cost of completing all of the necessary paperwork that is involved in a motor vehicle transaction. It's very important to note that a Texas dealership is not required to charge a documentary fee. And remember, you may never call the documentary fee a government fee. I want to repeat those two statements again. You're not required to charge a documentary fee. And if you are charging documentary fees, you're strictly prohibited under state law from calling the documentary fee a government fee. It is not a government fee. If you have any questions about charging documentary fees, you can call the Office of Consumer Credit Commissioner at 800 800- 538-1579. Once again, that phone number is 800-538-1579. Next, I want to cover very important advertising regulations. The following advertisement regulations apply whether you are advertising in print, radio, television, display, all forms of internet advertising, and any other type of ad medium. Advertisements by dealers must be accurate, clear, and conspicuous. One point to always remember is since you are a Texas dealer, you can no longer advertise by owner. You are not an owner. You're a dealer. So you have to advertise as a dealer. And you know, the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles does have several rules and guidelines when it comes to dealer advertising. And the advertising rules that we are getting ready to cover are located in Title 43 of the Texas Administrative Code in Chapter 215, Subchapter H. And in just a couple of moments, I'm going to show you how to easily look up state laws. In order to advertise a used motor vehicle, the title of the vehicle must be assigned to the dealer and the vehicle must be in possession of the dealer at the time that the advertisement is placed. Your advertisements may never be false, deceptive, or misleading. Any photograph of a vehicle being advertised must be substantially the same as the the vehicle that's being sold. I want to cover some prohibited advertising practices, such as untrue claims. The following words and phrases are prohibited in dealer advertisements. Statements such as, write your own deal, name your own price, name your own monthly payments or statements with similar meaning, statements such as everyone finance, no credit rejected, we finance anyone, and other statements that no applicant will be refused, or statements such as all applications accepted or no credit application refused. We can't use these terms. You know, statements such as financing available or conditional offer of credit are acceptable, Uh, However, you need to make sure that you're never using terms such as no credit rejected or we finance anyone. Those are actually violations of the state law. Stating that no other dealer can give you more for your trade-in unless the dealer can prove such statements, which is very, very difficult to to prove such statements. Stating that you can sell vehicles at lower prices than other dealers because of your size or inventory may never be used as well. The advertised price must include all costs and charges for the vehicle advertised, including destination and dealer preparation charges. The only charges that are not required to be included in the advertised price would be tax, title, license, and any fees that are allowed by state law, such as documentary fees and and state inspections. Here are some more prohibited advertising practices. The following statements are never allowed in dealer advertising, such as, Internet pricing, the term internet price or e-price or similar terms that lead a buyer to believe they are paying a different price for vehicles sold online are never allowed. Advertising vehicles at cost. You may never advertise that you will be selling vehicles at cost because of the difficulty in determining what the actual dealer cost would be. 
You may also never use the term invoice or invoice pricing in any advertisement. Trade-in guarantees. You may never advertise a guaranteed trade-in allowance. You may also never advertise that you will give a certain amount over Blue Book, Black Book, or other pricing guides. Advertising free items. You may never advertise free items unless the items are free for everyone, regardless if they're a customer. For example, if you advertise free hot dogs on a radio ad and a person comes in requesting a free hot dog, you could not tell the customer they must take a test drive in order to receive the free hot dog. Free items that you advertise are going to be free for everyone, regardless if they're a customer or not. Going out of business sales. You may never run a going out of business sale, closing out, shutting doors forever, liquidation sale, bankruptcy sale, or other similar phrases indicating a dealership is closing its operations, okay? Uh, you know, I hope this is a sale that you never run, but you don't want to run a going out of business sale unless you, in fact, are going to be going out of business. Lowest price guarantees. Claiming to offer the lowest prices guaranteed or any other similar worded advertisements may never be used. A dealer may offer a meet or beat guarantee if all terms of the guarantee are in writing. Dealer's cost. The term dealer's cost or other reference to the cost of the vehicle may never be used. Additionally, the use of the term you know, invoice or invoice pricings cannot be used, and this would include advertising an illustration of an invoice. Used vehicles. When a used vehicle is advertised, the vehicle must be identified as used or pre-owned. A used vehicle must not be advertised in any manner that creates the impression that the vehicle is new. You know, terms such as program car, special purchase, factory, repurchase, or other similar terms cannot be used to identify a vehicle as used. So since most of you that are taking this course are used dealers, you know, you must make sure that you have the words used or pre-owned in your advertising. Bait advertising, which is sometimes referred to as bait and switch advertising. Bait and switch advertising tactics violate Texas and federal laws. Bait advertising occurs when a dealer offers goods or services for sale, but the offer is not a real bona fide offer to sell the vehicle or the service. An offer is considered not in good faith if the dealer misrepresents an important aspect of the vehicle or secures the first contact with the customer through deception, discourages the sale of an advertised product or service in favor of a costlier item, or maybe if a dealer advertises a specific vehicle and then sells that vehicle and then tries to switch the future customer to a non-advertised vehicle. Let's talk about that. Let's say, for example, you advertise a 2018 Corvette in your local newspaper and the first person that sees it loves it, they buy it, and now it's gone. And then the second person comes in and states they would like to see that Corvette they saw in the paper. I always recommend saying something like, I'm sorry, we sold the Corvette you saw in the paper. I'll call you when we get another one that's just like it. What you never ever want to do is say, hey, listen, we sold that Corvette you saw in the paper, but come on over here and take a look at this Nissan Z we got in a couple of days ago. What you've done in this scenario is baited the customer in off of an ad, then switched the customer to something that was not in the ad, and that's a violation of state and federal advertising guidelines. You can never bait and switch. You know, the advertising methods that we're discussing in your dealer renewal course are going to apply to all forms of media, including print, television, radio, billboard, and all forms of internet, including but not limited to selling vehicles on Craigslist, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, or your own dealership's website. You know, by the way, there is a reason that every other ad on the radio, TV, and newspaper is a dealer ad, because advertising has really proven to lead to an increase in foot traffic to dealerships. So if you've never advertised in the past, you might consider it because it can possibly lead you to selling more vehicles on the lot. Exporting motor vehicles. You know, I want to cover exports with you. You know, you could currently have that dealership on that intersection or that highway, and you're only selling vehicles to passing by persons, that, or maybe a person that sees your local advertising. And, and that's great. And obviously, that is the foundation of our industry. But you never, ever have to limit yourself to selling locally because the world is your market. There's a great need for motor vehicles throughout the world, 
And you can seize this opportunity by exporting vehicles to other countries. But the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles has strict guidelines to follow when you're exporting vehicles to other countries. Texas law requires any dealer that is exporting a vehicle to another country to comply with Texas's motor vehicle export procedures. Any dealer who sells motor vehicles to foreign buyers are required to verify the identity of the buyer and stamp the title showing that the vehicle is an exported vehicle. And this rule was actually passed at the request of motor vehicle dealers. And the rule was designed to give the Department of Motor Vehicles one more tool to reduce curb stoning. And the rule is known as the Forum Buyer Rule, and it is directed at those foreign dealers and buyers who buy vehicles in Texas on the pretext of exporting to Mexico and other countries, but instead illegally sell the vehicles on this side of the border in unfair competition with Texas dealers. So many of those Texas dealers, along with a group of tax assessor collectors along the border, proposed the procedure to the Department of Motor Vehicle staff and then wrote the rule and presented it to the Texas Motor Vehicle Board. The rule was worded to apply to the sale uh, to any person claiming to buy vehicles for exporting. So you're also going to need to complete Form 14-312, which is known as the Motor Vehicle Sales Tax Exemption Certificate for any vehicle that's taken out of the state, such as an exported vehicle. Here's an example of a completed Form 14-312. Be sure to enter the purchaser's contact information, the vehicle information, then your dealership information. The purchaser must sign this form. So it's recommended that you send this document to the person that is buying the vehicle, have the buyer sign the document, then mail it back to you before you ship the vehicle to the other country. The rule also requires dealers to do two things. First of all, you've got to verify the identity of the buyer, and then you're also going to have to stamp the title with the words for export only, okay? And you know the dealer should obtain a copy of that person's driver's license, passport, passport or some type of photograph ID of the purchaser. So you've got to verify the identity of the purchaser, and you always want to keep copies in your records. But you will need to obtain a for export only stamp if you are exporting vehicles to other countries. The export stamp should be placed on the front of the title and be sure not to cover any important information on the front of the title. So it should also be placed on each blank reassignment on the back of the title as well. So as you can see here, the back of the title, each blank assignment has been stamped for export only. Dealers must also notify the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles whenever a vehicle is sold to a person in another country. You must check the vehicle for export box when you're ordering the buyer's e-tag through the e-tag system through, uh, through web dealer. I want you to be aware, you know, if you do have any questions about exporting, be sure to contact the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles before you export a vehicle so you can always maintain your compliance. Before the, we end this unit, I do want you to be aware of how to find state laws. That way, if you ever have a question about what exactly is written in state law, you'll be able to easily do that. And the state of Texas has many different sets of laws that you can search for, such as Texas statutes, the Texas Occupational Code, and many of the laws for dealers are in the state of in the state of Texas are written into the Texas Administrative Code, which is sometimes referred to as the TAC. So for this example, let's search the Texas Administrative Code. So you can just go to Google or you know whatever your favorite search engine is and type in Texas Administrative Code. And on this example, you're gonna see a direct link to the Texas Secretary of State website. So just click that link. And now you're on the Secretary of State's website, or you could you know, land on another website with a direct link to the Texas Administrative Code. Just click on the text that reads, Search Texas Administrative Code, and you're gonna land on the Search section of the Texas Administrative Code. So let's go ahead and search for, you know, type in Motor Vehicle Dealer, and you'll be able to find all the codes that contain the phrase Motor Vehicle Dealer. So you'll click the Find button there, and as you can see here, you know, TAC 215.133 has lots of information about general distinguishing numbers. TAC 215.137 has information about dealer surety bonds. You can also hit the next button to see even more codes that contain the text motor vehicle dealer.
As you can see here, there are several other TAC numbers that describe the operation of a motor vehicle dealership in law. Let's click on TAC 215.139 concerning metal dealer license plate allocation. So click on that link and now you can read the Texas Administrative Code that regulates metal dealer license plate allocations. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, the word motor vehicle dealer is highlighted to show our search term. At the top right of the screen, you can click the next link to see the next TAC number. So, you know, the state really makes it very easy to read the laws that regulate dealers. Great. We have finished the first unit in your dealer renewal course. And at the end of every unit, we will do a quick unit review to go over the content in that unit. In this unit, we've discussed the Deceptive Trade Practices Act. We've talked about the Lemon Law, how you may charge documentary fees. We covered advertising regulations. We talked about exporting motor vehicles and showed you how easy it is to find state laws. I want to give you a reminder that if you want to cover any portion of this unit or any other unit, all you need to do is go to the TexasDealers.com website. Once again, that's TexasDealers.com. Scroll down there and just click on the Texas Dealer Videos link. And at that time, you can fast forward to review any of the content that you want to go over after the course.